is titled Exceptions to the Rule. In our nation, we have laws that are supposed to protect American citizens. Many of these man-made laws have one or more exceptions. We as citizens cannot take the law into our own hands and put to death a criminal. In other words, if someone murders Janet and they take off, I have no right to pursue them and punish that person on my own. Nor would she have the right to do so if someone was to murder me. However, I do have the right as a citizen of the United States to protect her in the event that she is being threatened or myself in the event that I am being threatened. We do have that right. There's a difference in taking the law into our own hands and defending ourselves. There's also other things that we realize are exceptions to rules, such as it's against the law to run a lead, red light. However, in an, em an emergency vehicle, while in an emergency, may do so, uh, not carelessly, but observing, because it would do no good if they were to have a wreck themselves or an ambulance run a red light and then somebody hit them. So they can run red lights, but they have to do so with caution. They don't have the right to just barrel through there without paying attention. Also, it's against the law on many roads in Texas to go faster than 75 miles an hour. If I get out on, on uh, 35 and I drive 95 miles an hour, chances are I'm going to get a ticket. However, an emergency vehicle again can exceed that speed limit. They have the right to do so. They can go faster than 75 miles an hour. Now God has also laid down certain laws that we read in his word. In James 1, verse 25, we read, But whosoever looketh into the perfect law of liberty, so we understand that there is law. There's many who deny that there is law. But the scripture teaches that there is law. We are under a law. And it is a perfect law. It is a complete law. It is an ideal law. And it is a law of freedom. Now that does not mean that we have the freedom to do whatsoever we want. But there are laws that God has laid down in which we do find some exceptions. For instance, in Hebrews 9 verse 27, it is appointed unto man once to die, but after that the judgment. Now you know that physical death began whenever man's sin was cast out of the Garden of Eden so that they could no longer or not take of the tree of life. In Genesis 3 verse 19, in the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground, death is the law of God. We read in Genesis 3, verses 22 and 23, where they are cast out of the garden. That garden is blocked so that they can never enter back in to partake of the tree of life again in that garden. However, there are exceptions to the rule. We read in Genesis 5, verse 24, and Enoch walked with God, for he was not, for God took him. What's the rule? It's appointed unto man once to die. God said you're going to return to the ground from whence you came. Even Ecclesiastes 12, verse 7 says, And the dust shall return to the earth as it was, and the Spirit returned to God who gave it. But here we find a man named Enoch who did not die as the rest of us do. There's another exception. And we read of that in 2 Kings 2, verse 11. It came to pass as they went on and talked, that be, that's, that's Elisha, there appeared a chariot of fire and the horse of fire, and they parted them asunder. And Elijah went up in a whirlwind into heaven. doesn't say went up in the chariot, by the way. He went up in the whirlwind, didn't he? But he and Elisha were parted. Here's another case. Elijah did not taste death as you and I taste death and as all other mankind taste death. There's another exception still. And that's found in 1 Corinthians 15, verses 51 and 52. And this is in the future, so it's not something that we can say has already happened. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. And there he's talking about death. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. 
1 Thessalonians 4, verses 15 through 17, has a little bit more about that. I want to notice verse 17, that we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds, and so shall we ever be with the, the Lord. So here again, we have this. We have the fact that if Jesus Christ comes again before we die physically, we'll just be changed. We'll not sleep as others do. And so here's some exceptions to the rule that it's appointed unto man once to die and after that the judgment. I don't know if I'll be an exception. You don't know if you'll be an exception. But the fact is there are some exceptions. There's another rule in the scripture and that is only one wife during the lifetime of both. As long as you both shall live as, it, as we say quite often in our marriage vows. In Romans 7, verses 1 and 2, that rule is very well stated. I, I know ye not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law, how that the law hath dominion over a man as long as he liveth. For the woman which hath a husband is bound by the law to her husband so long as he liveth. But if the husband be dead, she is loose from the law of her husband. So here's the law. One man, one woman, for how long? For life. Ah, but there is an exception, isn't there? One exception only. And that's found in Matthew, the 19th chapter, verse 8. He that saith unto them, Moses, because the hardness of your heart suffered you to put away your wife, but from the beginning it was not so. It wasn't God's plan. And then we read in Matthew 19, verse 9, except it be for fornication. That is the exception. How many exceptions are there today? Only one, is it there? Okay, what's another rule that we can say? Looked at two. Let's look at another rule in which there are some exceptions. Well, the rule is that John's baptism was for, unto, into, it's the Greek word ice, the remission of sins. Mark 1 verse 4 says, And John did baptize in the wilderness and preached the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. Didn't he? Was there any exceptions to that? Yes, there was. We read in Matthew 3, verses 13 through 17, Jesus came from Galilee from Jordan, uh, to Jordan to John to be baptized of him. John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee. Comest thou to me? Jesus answered and said, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. So John baptized Jesus Christ. What's the point? point is, is that Jesus wasn't baptized for the remission of sins, was he? He is an exception to the rule. It was to fulfill all righteousness. Now, what does it mean to fulfill all righteousness? Well, righteousness is used in more than one way in the Bible. We can divide it up into two major ways. Number one, God is righteous. That's his nature. He's just, he's righteous. Uh, that's who, what he is. But there's another way that righteousness is used, and that is with reference to the commandments of God. In Psalms 119, verse 172, My tongue shall speak of thy word, for all thy commandments are righteousness. So what is righteousness? God's commandments in this case. Jesus said we need to fulfill all of God's will, all of God's commandments as it were, what God expects of us. In John 4, verse 34, Jesus said unto a crowd of people, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. That's what Jesus fed upon. You've heard people say his bread and butter or, or he eats, sleeps, and lives this or that. Well, that's what he's saying. He's saying, this is what I live for. This is what I do. I'm here to do exactly what the Father sent me to do. I will fulfill his will. And that was a part, fulfilling all righteousness whenever John baptized him. In John 8, verses 28 and 29, Jesus said, I do nothing of myself, but as the Father hath, sent me, hath taught me. So what did Jesus say? I'm doing the will of the Father fully. I'm doing the will of the Father completely. I'm completely within those things that he desires of me. And how does that relate to John's baptism? Well, it's the fact that that's exactly what he was doing, the will of the Father that sent him whenever he was baptized of John. And that's what he meant when he said, let us fulfill all righteousness. The Father expected Jesus to be baptized. He commanded Jesus to be baptized. It was the Father's will that Jesus be baptized. 
And so whenever Jesus was baptized by John, he was doing exactly what the Father expected him to do. Matter of fact, he couldn't have been baptized for the remission of sins anyway, could he? The reason is because he had no sin. In Hebrews 4, verse 15, we read, We have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet, listen, yet without sin. Every man, and we're going to talk about this, who's reached the age of accountability has sinned, except one. That's Jesus Christ. 1 Peter 2, verse 22 says, He did no sin, neither was God found in his mouth. Since Jesus was sinless, it made no sense to baptize him. You know, it's like, it's like these religions that take a little baby and baptize the babies. It doesn't make sense. Why? Because they don't need to be baptized. They have no sin. They're pure. They're clean. Neither could Jesus be baptized for the remission of sins. Now, let's look at another exception. That all accountable people have sinned. In Romans 3 verse 23 it says, All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Was Jesus an accountable person? Absolutely he was an accountable person. And yet we read in Hebrews 4 verse 15, Yet without sin, though he was tempted in all points like as we are. First Peter 2, 22, again, he did no sin. So the rule is, all accountable people have sinned. Is there an exception to that rule? Yes, there is, and that is Jesus Christ. Now this leaves us with the consequences of sin for every accountable individual. In Romans 6, verse 23, the wages of sin is death. Since we have all sinned except Jesus, then we must all face the consequences of our sin, which is eternal death. However, God has provided a way for escape from the consequences through his Son, Jesus Christ. In John 3, verse 16, he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth on him should not perish but have everlasting life. He provided a way for man to be saved. In Acts 4, verse 12, we learn, neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. There's no other way. All have sinned. Come short of the glory of God. Jesus Christ is the exception. But we have to realize that because of our sin, we've earned death. That's what we deserve. And there's only one way to escape that eternal death. And that is through the sinless one, Jesus Christ himself. Our perfect sacrifice. And through him, forgiveness is made possible. Now, we've talked about sins for which there are things of which there are exceptions to God's rules. I want to talk about some rules for which there are no exceptions. Now, not talking about all of them anymore. Not talked about all exceptions. I'm not talking about all rules for which there are no exceptions. But I do want to talk about a few rules for which there are no exceptions. One of those rules is, is that one must be a member, absolutely must be a member of the Lord's church if they're to be saved, if they're to reach heaven. There's no other way, absolutely no other way. In Ephesians 5 verse 23, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. He is the Savior of the body. What is the body? Well, Ephesians 1, 22 and 23 tells us that, he is, that the church is his body. And so we understand that Jesus is the Savior of the church. He is not the Savior of any man-made organization, from a religious organization to secular organizations. There's a lot of good organizations in this world that are non-religious. Many of them, I used to be able to... Mention Boy Scouts. I can't mention Boy Scouts anymore, hardly can I, because of the rules that have changed and the, the liberalism that's crept in with reference to God and his rules concerning men and women. However, there are still many good... Rotary Club may be a good organization in many places. Chamber of Commerce may be a good organization in many places. There's organizations that are good, they do good and... Wonderful things. And yet, 
There's only one organization, only one organization in which a person can be saved, and that is the church which our Lord and Savior built, Jesus Christ. One must worship. Also, another rule of which there is no exception is that one must worship according to God's word. Of this, there are no exceptions. You cannot add to, you cannot take away from how God wants to worship us. How we want to worship God. Pardon me, forgive me, please. The point is, is that we must worship Him. He is God. We are the ones who are worshipers. It's not a matter of pleasing my ear. It's not a matter of making me feel some special way. It's a matter of me loving my God enough to worship him the way that he desires to be worshipped. You know, a lot of people throughout history, even in the Old Testament, simply were not satisfied with God's way of worship. And they altered it and they changed it. And people are still doing that same thing today. If we must know God's word, that we know the proper way to worship. Jesus said in John 4, verse 24, that God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him. It's not a suggestion, friends. It's not a, I think this is a good thing, friends. This is, they that worship him must worship him in spirit, from your innermost being, as it were, in all sincerity. Must worship him in spirit and in truth. Truth is God's word, according to God's word. There are no exceptions. Also, one must not only worship God and worship him correctly, they must serve God as well. In Romans 12, verses 10 through 11, Paul wrote by inspiration, Be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love and honor preferring one another, not slothful in business, fervent in spirit. Now listen, serving the Lord. God created us. He made us. We have a purpose here. And that purpose is to serve Him. We cannot neglect that. If we go off and we think our purpose is to be self-satisfied, if we think our purpose is to fulfill every desire and every lust we might have, then we're missing the mark. Our purpose is to serve our God. One must put God first and His kingdom first. There are no exceptions. I cannot put my job, I cannot put my wife, I cannot put my children first, as important as they are. And God recognizes the importance of these things. But God must come first in my life. He must have the preeminence. He is my God, He is my creator. He has the right to be first in my life. We read in Matthew 6, 33, Seek ye first the kingdom of God just after my wife? No. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, just after my job? No. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, after fishing, after hunting, after golf, whatever? No. After the Super Bowl? No. It doesn't work that way. Seek ye first. Put him first in your life. Well, Hebrews 5 verse 9 informs us of something else, that we must be Christians. Becoming a Christian involves obedience. We read in Hebrews 5, 9, being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation to all those who believe in him. No, that's not right. I misquoted it, didn't I? It says to all them that obey him. It's good to believe. We need to believe. We must believe. But there's a lot of people who believe and they're not doing a thing about it. They believe that there's a God. They believe in Jesus Christ. Whenever I was a young person and I was living in sin, I would say, I know that there's a God. I didn't have any doubt about there being a God. No question at all in my mind that there was a God. And he was Jehovah God, the author of the Bible. I knew that there were things I needed to do. And I wasn't doing them. I knew I was going against my my Lord's word. I knew those things. But I wasn't acting on them. I was pursuing what I thought would bring joy. I was pursuing what I thought would make me happy. 
And friends, it's a path that leads to destruction. It's not enough just to believe. One must believe and one must act. They have to obey God. It's not enough just to believe. Well, we say that, and that comes to another question. How does one become a Christian? How does one become a Christian? We've seen that God has rules. God has some exceptions. God has rules that have no exceptions. There are no exceptions as to how we become a Christian. Did you know that? No exception to these rules. One first of all must believe. Remember the parable of the sower? In Luke the 8th chapter verse 12 where the sower goes forth and sows seed. Those by the wayside are they that hear. Then cometh the devil and taketh away the word out of their heart. Now listen, lest they should believe and be saved. You cannot be saved without faith. The old devil would rob you of your faith. He'd infuse you with, with atheism, agnosticism, deism, and all of these kind of things. But let me tell you something. There's only one thing that can start you on your path to salvation, and that's hearing the gospel of Jesus Christ. And then, as in the power of the sower, after hearing, what should you do? You must believe, because without hearing and without believing, you cannot be saved. Not only that, no exception to that. Not only that, you must repent. Paul testifies before King Agrippa of his own conversion. In Acts the 26th chapter, verses 19 and 20, Whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision, but showed first unto them of Damascus and at Jerusalem and throughout all the coast of Judea and then to the Gentiles that they should repent and turn to God and do works meet for repentance. Paul taught repentance. Why? Because that was in the great commission that Luke gave that Jesus gave in the book of Luke, chapter 24, that repentance and remission of sins should be preached among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. It was very clear, very plain, very straightforward. And that's exactly what the apostles taught. And there's no way to be saved without repentance. Now think about this. If I have to repent before baptism, and I do, and I haven't repented, and I went to the water to please my wife, my father, my mother, my husband, my wife, whatever, to please somebody else or for some other reason, then I was not baptized properly. I have to repent. I've seen two men in their 80s. Well, one of them may have been in his 70s, upper 70s in their 70s or 80s, come forward to obey the gospel. One of them sang, I was baptized, and he had been an elder in the Lord's church. He said, I was baptized because my wife, when we got married, wanted me to be baptized. Friends, that won't cut it. I know a young man, he's dating a young lady. And he told her, he said, I can't marry you unless you become a Christian. Guess what? She obeyed the gospel. Later she left after a divorce. She may have obeyed the gospel, not to obey, please God, but rather to please Him. Friend, that makes it wrong if that's the case. It will not do any of us a bit of good it will not take us on the road to salvation if, I'm, if, I, if I don't truly repent. And these things I'm talking about are not true repentance. I'll grant you, I have to learn. There's things I didn't know when I first obeyed the gospel. I had to learn things. But I repented of the way I'd been living. I repented of those things I knew was wrong. As I grew in the faith, I learned more I needed to repent about. But that's the way it is as a Christian. We're baptized into a life of repentance as well, aren't we? Well, let's continue. We must repent. We're going to be saved. Confession. 
In Romans 10, verses 9 and 10, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto, by the way, this word is the same Greek word used in Acts 2.38, ace, from one state into another, unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto, guess what this word is, very same Greek word, ace, into salvation, from one state into another. You cannot enter into the state of salvation without Confessing with the mouth. You must confess with the mouth. Confession is made unto salvation. Friend, there are no exceptions. No exceptions to hearing the gospel. No exceptions to believing the gospel. No exceptions to repentance. No exceptions to these things. And there's one thing a lot of people believe there's an exception to. And it is the final step. It's the thing that separates us from being lost to being saved from our past sins. It's the thing that separates us from being alien sinners to being Christians. It's the one step that remains, and that is the step of baptism. There's no exceptions to this. I cannot be saved if I'm, if I'm not baptized. In Galatians 5, verses 26 and 27, For you are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. The question is, you say you don't have to be baptized, you believe you don't have to be baptized, then the question is, can you be saved outside of Christ? Because you're put, you put Christ on in baptism. You're baptized into Christ. If you can be saved without baptism, then you can be saved outside of Christ. And that's a false statement. That's impossible. You have to be in Christ. That's where all spiritual blessings are. Ephesians 1, verse 3. Spiritual blessings include salvation. Forgiveness of sins as we walk through this life. It includes these things. So those who say that you don't need to be baptized. Ignore the fact that you have to be in Christ in order to be saved. He wrote an article on people who are getting wider and wider in their views of who can be saved. And that, boy, that just, this just narrows it right down. Let's listen to this. It doesn't matter if I've just started for the baptistry and I have a heart attack on the way, I'm not in Christ, am I? I'm lost. It doesn't matter if I'm in Death Valley and I learn the truth and I can't get to water and I die of thirst. The fact is, I'm outside of Christ, so I'm lost if I die in that state. All of these hypothetical situations that appeal to the emotions, all of these hypothetical situations that try to appeal of our sense of sympathy and, and what we think is right, doesn't matter. The fact is, if I die outside of Christ, or if you die outside of Christ, we die lost. And baptism is the final step that separates us from our lost state to our saved state. Romans 6, verses 16 through 18 tell us something else for which there are no exceptions. Baptism, no exception. I can't be saved without it. Romans 6, verses 16 through 18. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants you are to whom you obey, whether of sin unto death or of, dis or of obedience unto righteousness. But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered unto you. Being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. Paul wasn't giving thanks that they were servants of sin. He's giving thanks that they've changed that they're no longer servants of sin. You used to be this, but now you're this. God be thanked. What must you be? You must be a servant of righteousness, a servant of God, a servant of doing that which is right. You must change. 
You must live for the Lord. We quoted a verse earlier. Matthew 6, 33. I know a lot of preachers if you used to ask them what their favorite verse is. This will probably stand out. I've heard preachers say this is their favorite verse. Matthew 33, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. I know other preachers who have other verses that they might say was their favorite verse, but this is some. Seek ye first the kingdom of righteousness. Serve the Lord. Serve God. Let me tell you something. What did the wise man Solomon say at the conclusion of his experiment is revealed in the book of Ecclesiastes where man should find what he should do all the days of his life. He said in verse 13 of chapter 12, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments for this is the whole the word duties in italics added by the translators. This is the whole of man. You want to know what man should do all the days of his life? He should fear God and keep his commandments. That's where he finds fulfillment. That's where he finds wholeness. That's where he's going to find happiness and joy. There used to be a song back whenever I was a kid. It was called Looking for Love in All the Wrong Places. Friend, there's a lot of people who's looking for happiness in all the wrong places. They're looking for joy and peace, looking for fulfillment, and they're looking in all the wrong places. You want to know where to look for fulfillment, joy, and peace? It's in God's Word. It's in Jesus Christ. That's where you'll find it. Let me tell you something. There may be some earthly joys in the pleasures of this world. There are pleasures in this world that Satan offers. But the greatest joy is that which lasts. You know how Satan offers joy? I'll tell you how his joy is. It's like whenever you were a little kid. Do you remember you wanting something when you were a little kid? And maybe you said this to your folks. Maybe you said, if I can have that, I'll never ask for anything else. You ever say that? Was there anything you ever wanted? And you just thought if you could have that, it would make you so happy that you'd never want anything else. That didn't hold on, did it? Didn't last. You know, the things that we think we want so much that are the pleasures of this world don't last. They don't keep us fulfilled. They don't keep us happy. They won't take us to heaven. There's only one way, and there's no exceptions. And that's through our Lord and Savior. We've discussed the way. Perhaps you're subject to the invitation that Jesus offers. Perhaps your desire is to reach heaven and to be with God and Jesus Christ, your Savior, for all eternity. He offers that salvation. He offers escape from torment. But you have to follow the rules that he's given. Will you come to Jesus Christ? Will you obey him this morning while together we stand and while we sing?